A delightfully diverse place, set on the shores of Lake Ored, one of Europe's oldest and largest lakes. Ored is home to awe-inspiring orthodox architectural masterpieces and religious artworks. One of just 28 sites accepted as both cultural and natural world heritage sites by UNESCO, the ancient city of Ord is the jewel in Macedonia's crown. Whether you are looking for cultural, relaxing, or active holidays, or it falls into all of these categories and surely is one of the best places to visit in Macedonia. Here's a look at the best places to visit in Orend. Orend developed very specific architecture with tight narrow streets and tunnels. The houses had tiny yards usually enclosed in the ground floor, and the houses grew over the streets on the upper floors t the locations were small. Interesting houses can be seen all over the old town, but the best examples of traditional architecture here are Robevci and Urania houses. Especially rich in terms of architecture is Urania House, with entrances on different levels and inside galleries. They have been turned into museums today offering exhibits which include traditional wood carvings, furniture, costumes, photographs and personal possessions from 19th century. On the top level of Robertschi House, there is great view over the old part of the city and Lake Oran. The famous Cathedral of St. Sophia, containing magnificent frescoes from the 11th century, is located in the old city center. Exceptional frescoes are among the best achievements in medieval painting from the period of the Macedonian dynasty in Byzantium. According to the archaeological excavations, the church was built on the foundation of an early Christian basilica and was renovated and adorned with frescoes in the 11th century in the time of the Archbishop Leo in the period between 1037 and 1056. The cathedral was the seat of the Ocrid Archbishopric for several centuries and is the largest and most magnificently preserved monument of church architecture in Ocrid in Macedonia. Unfortunately, the interior doesn't have much preserved of its original splendor due to the fact that St. Sophia was transformed into a mosque in the second half of the 15th century and later into a storehouse. In 1912, it was transformed back into an Orthodox church. As a unique gallery of paintings from the period between the 11th and 14th centuries, it is one of the most important medieval monuments, not only in Ocrid in Macedonia, but in the Byzantine art in general. During the Ockert Summer Festival, the church is used as a venue for classical concerts and plays due to the exceptional quality of its acoustics.
picturesque church devoted to St. John the Theologian is one of the eldest and most attractive churches in Oak Ridge. There are no written records about the time when it was built, but it is believed that it originates from the 13th century. Standing alone on a cliff overhanging Lake Oak Ridge, above the fishing settlement of Canio, from which the church has got its name, it is one of the landmarks of the old town of Oak Ridge and a favorite symbol of an entire city. Its unique location affords magnificent views of the lake, the city, and Galicitsa National Park. Besides its beautiful location, the most impressive are the facades and the dome of the church because of the harmonious and masterly done decoration of bricks and blocks of tuff. Unfortunately, there is not much preserved of the inner decoration on its walls, except some parts in the dome and the apse, as well as on the north and south piers. According to the historical sources, the church was abandoned in the period from the 17th till the 19th century, which resulted in the destruction of the frescoes on its walls. The exquisite combination of Byzantine and Armenian elements is significant to the architecture of the church and makes it one of the most recognizable medieval monuments in Oak Ridge. A spot called Plaujnik, south of Samuel's Fortress, were the remains of the Polyconchal early Christian Basilica with its magnificent mosaics dating from the 5th century AD still stand, there is another important cultural monument, the Church of St. Pantaleimo. It was built in 893 by the patron saint of Ocrid, St. Clement, on the remains of another early Christian basilica decorated with floor mosaics. the spring of the Slavic literary and cultural activity and here St. Clement of Ocrid educated more than 3,500 disciples. The saint was buried in his church after his death in 916 and his grave that was built by his hand still stands there. In the 15th century, during the Ottoman domination in this region, St. Clement's church was transformed into a mosque known as Sultan Muhammad Mosque and then the reigns of St. Clement were transferred to the Church of Mother of God Periblitos. During the past several years, the old Church of St. Clement was reconstructed and sanctified in August 2002 under the name Saints Clement and Pantalei. And the remains of the saint were transferred back to his grave after 530 years. Holy Konkol Basilica at Plaujnik. The ruins of this monumental Episcopal church stand on the spot called Plaujnik, one of the most serene places in the old part of town. It was probably built and decorated in the 5th or 6th century when the town Lake Nidos, antique name of Oak Ridge, was an important early Christian Episcopal center. The basilica has been erected on the foundations of an older classical temple and has a trefoil shape. Unknown artists decorated it with magnificent mosaics figurative floral, and zamorphic motifs.
Pokrit's fortress is one of the largest fortification objects in Macedonia. Through the history it has been destroyed many times, but also rebuilt and enlarged, so it bears traits from almost all the historical epochs. However, it is considered that the biggest part of the fortress is from the time of Tsar Samuel, from 976 to 1014, when Okrid was the capital of the first state of the Macedonian Slavs, and therefore today it's known as Samuel's Fortress. After the complete fall of that kingdom, and fallen again under the Byzantine rule, the Emperor Basil II completely destroyed the fortress, but later on it was rebuilt several times. By its ramparts and towers, the fortress encompasses the whole hill of Ochre that rises above the lake. From all sides, except the south that is turned towards the lake, the city is protected by high towers and walls, about three kilometers long. The height of the ramparts is different, from 3 to 16 meters, depending on the terrain. The last one who has used the fortress for defense and living was Dzeladin Bey, an outlaw from the Ottoman Central Administration, who ruled Okrid by the end of the 18th and the beginning of the 19th century. The antique theater is situated right above Samuel's fortress, close to the upper gate. It was built by the end of the 3rd or at the beginning of the 2nd century BC for dramatic, musical, and poetic performances and had about 4,000 seats. Right after the Roman conquest of this region in 148 BC, the theatre was readapted into an arena for gladiator fights and fights with wild beasts. Because of this, several of the lower rows of seats were destroyed and replaced with several cages for the animals and the orchestra with the honorary seats was enclosed with a protecting wall. It is considered that towards the end of the 3rd or in the beginning of the 4th century AD, when Christianity has arrived in Okrid, all the pagan buildings in the city had been destroyed. Most likely the theater had also been destroyed and the material from its seats was later used for construction of early Christian basilicas and other sacral buildings. After it was completely uncovered and operational, plays, musical performances, and other events started taking place again after 20 centuries in the open, reconstructed scene of the antique theater.
along the southern coast of the Gratis Peninsula, near the village of Pestani. At a depth of 3 to 5 meters, numerous wooden piles were discovered hanging at the bottom of the lake, and numerous movable archaeological material, with chronological affiliation at the end of the Bronze Age and the beginning of the Iron Age. From 1200 BC to 700 AD it is assumed that this and other similar settlements on Lake Orit belong to the time when the first tribal populations began to be profiled, to the time of the existence of the Bridgets, the oldest tribal community in this area, which is, in fact, an integral element of the ancient Macedonian ethnic substratum. It was built on a platform placed on wooden piles nailed to the bottom of the lake and with a wooden bridge this settlement was connected to the mainland. At the bottom of the lake in the area of this settlement there is a striking concentration of targets, especially fragmented ceramic vessels, stone artifacts and fragmented animal bones. It is assumed that these items were used as fishing gear by the then inhabitants of the settlement. From the Galachitsu National Park stretch the stunning views of the Ored Lake and Prispa Lake. It is especially attractive for visitors to observe the two beautiful lakes at the same time. Attractive landscape, aesthetic and rare values also apply to the mountain characteristics. Gliding is a recreational activity, is the main adrenaline and adventure attraction. Along with the city of Ord and the lake, the mountain was placed under the protection of UNESCO. The Monastery of St. Nam, some 29 kilometers from Okerid, has a magnificent location in the rocks high above Lake Okerid, surrounded by a beautiful natural environment. The most representative part of the monastery complex is the Church of St. Nam of Okerid. St. Nam, world famous for his miraculous healing powers and a contemporary of St. Clement, built the church originally dedicated to the holy archangels Michael and Gabriel in 900. St. Nam was buried in the church in 910, in a small chapel, and numerous pilgrims come each year to visit the grave of the saint. The chapel is decorated with beautiful frescoes with scenes from the life and miracles of St. Nam. Later on, under Turkish rule, the church was completely destroyed.
Today's church was built in several stages between the 16th and 17th centuries on the foundations of the old church. There are no fresco decorations from the 10th century preserved in the church. The present frescoes on the wall of the church were painted in 1806. Another characteristic element of the church is the carved iconostasis made in 1711 along with most of the icons.